Hey there. Um, today we're going to talk about how to create a very basic um, bike share model using code. Um, before we do that, what I'd like to do is first just try to motivate exactly how we can approach this um, from a, a, a modeling perspective. All right, so um, let's let's just first think about here at Queens College. I know sometimes uh, you are oh, you're in Kylie Hall. Hello, hi Kylie Hall. There's all our people hanging out in the big tower. And then way over here, you draw go past the library and the clock tower. And then you have to go past the field. All the way over here is Queen's Hall. And they only give you, what, five, ten minutes to get, maybe ten, ten, fifteen minutes to get from Kylie Hall to Queen's Hall. Whoa. And it might be nice if instead of having to walk that whole distance, instead we had some sort of bike share. All right, so we got some bikes here. You come out of class, you grab a bike, you take it all the way over to Queen's Hall. And similarly, if you're at Queen's Hall, they have some bikes here at Queen's Hall. And you can use these bikes to get back and forth and maybe save yourself some minutes of time uh, so you can get to class on time. Let's try to think about what type of variables we might need to keep track of if we're going to simulate this um, this bike share. So we'd really like to know, we'd, we'd like to simulate, well, how the bikes are, uh, how when, when there'll be a bike available, when there won't be a bike available, um, how many bikes there are, um, a lot of different information. And we'd like to you know, create basically our own little Queen's bike instead of city bike, which is for a bigger city. So let's do a little bit of brainstorming. Uh, maybe pause the video for a minute or two and uh, think about what type of variables we would need to keep track of if we're going to keep track of bikes going back and forth. So take a quick pause and then come back. Welcome back. Um, so what type of things we might need to keep track of? Well, we'll probably need to keep track of how many bikes are at Queens Hall, how many bikes are at um, Kylie Hall, um, at the very least. So these will be our things that we start out with, but some things that we might that might show up is we might care about um, uh, the weather, right? The weather might tell us how long it takes, or we might want to keep track of the time of day. At different times of the day, bikes are going at different uh, rates in the different directions. Uh, we need to keep track of how often bikes are moved. We might need to keep track of whether bikes break down. We might need to keep track of um, how uh, of 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 uh, what. Like if is there space to storage store each of them? Storage. Right? So there's a lot of different things that we are going to keep track of, but these these two pieces of information, how many bikes there are at each of the places, this is like the bare minimum of things that we need to keep track of. So we're gonna create a simple piece of code that keeps track of how many bikes there are at each of the locations and then sends bikes from one place to the other. 
All right, and so the way we're going to set this up, so keeping track of bikes. So we are going to um, be moving to the terminology the book uses just so that it'll be easier to use the notebooks and easier to, um, to read along with the book. So what that means is that instead of talking about Queens Hall and Kylie Hall, we're going to instead talk about Olin College, which is a tiny uh, engineering college in, in Massachusetts and a school that's not so far from them, Wellesley College. Wellesley, Wellesley. I always pronounce extra, extra syllables than I need to, especially for all these New England towns. So we've got Wellesley College. And so what we're doing is we're sending bikes back and forth between these two colleges. And we want to keep track of how that is working. So here's our assumptions right now. And these are our very basic assumptions just to get us started. If we want to, the better, the way we get a better model is to make better assumptions. And so we can talk about those too. So in terms of assumptions, we can say that there's 12 bikes total. Don't know if that would work at Queens College, but this is what we're, we're starting with. We start out with 10 at Olin and 2 at Wellesley. And so what we'd like to do is we're going to take this information. We're taking this information and we are going to put it into one object. So this is something we're going to see again and again. And I kind of like to think of it as a shopping bag. And it's called a state object. And so we, we use a state object to keep track, keeps track of the current state of the system. All right, so we, we're going to put in this bag, in this object, in this state object, we're going to put some information in it. We're going to keep track of the fact that there is, so we're going to call it, we're going to give it a name. The name of this thing, let me put it in red. And we're going to call it bike share. This is the name that we're attaching to this state object. And we're going to put some information in it. And the information we want to put in it are that Olin is equal to 10 and Wellesley is equal to 2. That's the information in the bag. Right, and that is that completely defines where all the bikes are at, at this at this current state. And so this information, I mean, as the bike share changes, then the number of bikes at both the both places are going to change. But for right now, this is how it's starting. And so what we'll do is we'll define bike share to be equal to state of Olin equals 10 and Wellesley equals 2. All right, and what that's doing is that is defining this bag, this object, this state object, and that's keeping track of the current state of the system, and it's putting in this in these initial values for uh, Olin and for Wellesley. All right, let's go look at that. Let's go do that over there in Python. Let's head over there. 
All right, so we're now over here in Python in our Jupyter Notebooks. Remember to watch that first video so that you're a little bit more comfortable here. Here I have created the, a, a Python notebook for this recording. And I made a new copy for myself, put it in for the recording. So we're opening up the notebook for the first time. Remember, run this first piece of code. It imports pint and it makes available all the information from ModSim that we need to uh, uh, need in here. For example, that piece of code that said state, that was defined because ModSim was, was there. All right, so here we go. We define bike share equals state of Olin equals 10, Wellesley equals two, shift enter evaluates it. And this is one of those instances where Python hasn't shown us what it's done. So the default here is that Python's not going to give an output. So if I add a new line of code that just says bike share and I run it, then Python will tell us that Olin is equal to 10 Wellesley equals two, and this is the state object. So by default, it didn't tell us what bike share was. We then instead said bike share, and bike share tells us what, what's in this object. You'll notice something. So um, if you've used another, a number of different programming languages, we haven't, we never told Python that Olin was a number. We never told Python Wellesley was a number. We never defined those. We didn't, we didn't initialize those values to be a certain type or anything. It's just going with it. It's just saying, okay, you gave me this bag of variables. One of them's called Olin, sure. One of them's called Wellesley? Sure. It's got this 10 and this 2 in it. And we can use the dot operator to get bike share dot Olin. And that will extract the value of the state, the state variable. Bike share dot Wellesley gives 2. And so um, what I'm going to suggest now is that you try these two exercises. What happens if you spell the name of the state variable wrong? You do bike share dot queens. Uh, what happens? It's going to get that information. Like, what's going to happen? You figure it out. Uh, and then add a third attribute with initial value zero. Display the state of bike share again. So you could define it not just with two variables, but with, with however many variables you want. So go ahead, try those out, um, and I'll see you next time. Bye.